supposed to be. I felt this darkness over me. We all get there eventually. I never knew. Hi everyone, my name is Sally and I am a music leader for the Urban Vocal Group. I'm also a singing and voice teacher and I specialise in contemporary and commercial technique and vocal health. And today I want to continue with our videos that I've been making for the Urban Vocal Group um, based around vocal health and learning how to improve your singing voice. Today I'm continuing with vocal health. So for those of you who um, don't really know much about why vocal health is so important to singers, it's because if you kind of thought if you was if you was a runner and you twisted your ankle and suddenly you couldn't run anymore, that is kind of um, a bit of a warning sign that you need to stop and you need to rest and you need to look after yourself. Whereas for singers and actors and and all the different professional voice users that I work with, if they start to get problems within their voice. They don't often see that as a warning sign, and I know that most people don't. Now, the problem is, because your voice is being used all day, every day, when you speak or, or when you sing, we don't really get time to rest it. And what I want you to start thinking about is you need to start giving yourself a little TLC and some kindness for your voice, because at the end of the day, we need this voice. We've only got one. We can't get new ones. We can't go and replace them. And we can't very easily fix the problems ourselves. And we often need to go and get professional help in order to make things better within our voice if we do start to have problems. Now, what I want you to start thinking about is this is its not something to worry about. It's something to be mindful of and something to pay attention to and look out for warning signs just in case we start to see our voice start to go downhill. Because if you start to notice earlier on, then we can do something about it and we can get a lot of things done very, very quickly within your um, your vocal health and within the things that you're doing, the songs you're singing, um, in order to make your voice a little healthier and kind of ensuring that you're gonna be able to sing for the rest of your life rather than go through all the things that we're singing, people like Adele, Sam Smith, Jess Glynn, all of those stars that are, that are kind of under lots of pressures within their singing voice and they're, they're ending up having to cancel most of their gigs because they have damaged their voice, you know? And this is something that I want you to start thinking about is that it's a very real thing and it, it completely changes lives. It can be very, very devastating if you love to sing and that is where you get a lot of joy and a lot of enjoyment from. Could you imagine if you weren't able to sing anymore? So that's kind of like the, the heavy part of it. It's like, you need to really care about this because it is so important. Now, today I want to give you some of the warning signs that you might need to start to pay attention to your vocal health. Now, I want to, to kind of start out very, very, um, from the beginning with this, I want to start out very straight that you may have all of these signs and it doesn't mean that you've got anything serious wrong with your voice. You just need to look at some technique work and you just need to look at how you're singing and what you're singing. So don't think that as soon as you go down, oh, I've got that happens and that happens and that happens. Don't think that you've got something terrible like, like polyps or nodules or something really, really horrid within your voice. What I want you to start doing is, is kind of having that as, as almost like a alarm bell to go, right, okay, I need to do something about this. Now, like I said, you may have all of these and there may be nothing seriously wrong. Um, you may have none of these things and there may be something not quite right within your voice that we do need to look after. So what I want you to think about is if you are worried yourself about your voice or you feel like something isn't right or you're getting any pain or any of the things that I'm about to, to kind of list through for you, um, please get in contact with us. We are here to support you at the UVG. So if you are a member of the UVG, um, that's what that's what all of the tutors here exist for and obviously my specialism is vocal health so if you've got any worries please um don't hesitate to send a message or even a video of when these things are going wrong in your voice or what you're worried about because um i would hate that just because we are locked down at the moment that you wouldn't get to actually um still benefit from um our support and our advice so yeah um so the warning signs that I want you to start looking out for, remember, don't be frightened of these. It is just a little bit of like your body telling you that it needs a little bit of help and a little bit of support every now and then. So the first one 
that we all will experience some of us most of the time you know that it will it will come in probably daily is tightness and strain in your voice now if you are getting to the point that when you are singing you're squeezing and working so hard all these muscles bunch up around your vocal folds and your vocal folds are only tiny tiny sides they're only as big as your little finger now and all of that force and all of that squeezing going underneath those vocal folds are going to just make it really really unhappy and and um really really unhappy could get the word out really really unhappy and we can't um we can't maintain that pressure and we can't take that force in our voice and after a while you might start to feel um tired when you sing and you might start to feel like everything is just wanting to give up and very unstable for you so the first thing i want you to look out for is strain and if you are straining more um more often than not then we would want to look at that because that could be a worry for you okay <clears throat> Obviously a hoarse or husky voice. So if you've got like this, this sound after you've been singing or even during singing or just creeping into your everyday speech, that is a sign that we may need to do some work just to kind of bring your voice back into shape and to help you start to feel better when you sing. And remember these, these things that I'm telling you, they're not about saying that you're a bad singer or that, that you've, you've done something wrong within your singing voice. It's about making you realize that actually we're all human and no matter how trained you are and whether you, whether you had lessons for years, whether you are a teacher yourself, whether you are, um, someone who has been singing for a long time, who's a professional singer, who is, or, or like um, for, for our UVG people that are starting out, we, we all will suffer times when our voice starts to kind of give up on us, you know? So what I want you to think about is that there's no shame in having these problems creep in because they creep into me every now and then and I have to do some work to kind of undo them. And I've already started to talk about some of the ways that you can help your voice. And that is through the bottle and straw technique that is on another video or on um, by looking at how much water you're drinking and the way that you're singing, how you're using your range, whether you're using head voice and chest voice. All the videos that I've uploaded so far around singing and vocal health are there to help with these issues. So if you are having problems, maybe go back and have a little look at those videos and see whether you can implement any of those into your singing to see whether you can actually start to make a difference within it. Okay, so let's kind of recap so far. So we've got tight or strained feeling. We have a hoarse or husky sound. So kind of that, um, that, that kind of gravelly sound or even like the voice slipping up and down. And that's not to be confused with if you are a, a guy and your voice is changing right now. That's not to be confused with that. If you if you are kind of going through, through your voice change and, um, and you're hearing like slips in your voice or you're getting problems in your range, that is completely different to what we would get from tired voices. But again, that is a warning sign that your voice needs a little bit of care and attention because you can't care and sing in the way that you always did before your voice change. Okay, so just kind of bear that in mind. And if you are going through that, please get in contact because there's a lot of things you can do to help your voice strengthen and continue developing while your voice is changing. Okay, so um, any general changes within your voice we'd, we'd kind of wanted to look at. So if you suddenly are sounding really, really low, or if you're sounding really, really tight and high when you speak and everything's a little bit more difficult. So anything that is an obvious change within your speaking voice, obviously that would be a little bit of, um, right, let's have a look what's going on there, okay? Um, scratch your squeaky sounds when you're trying to um, sing, like oh, any of those sounds coming out or, or it feeling really scratchy and, and tickly. Um, needing to cough, feeling like when you are singing that you feel like you need to cough or there's a lot of breathy sound coming through which tickles and really aggravates you. That's uh, another warning sign we'd look at. Um, changes in your range. So suddenly um, where you could sing before you can't sing there anymore. Like, And that could be either at the lower part of your range, it could be at the higher part of your range, but often we see it in the mid range that you suddenly can't sing where you could and often you could sing but you have to sing at high volumes to get any of those sounds out so it may be that your effort is kind of changed that you need to work harder to get any of those sounds out okay um trouble pitching so suddenly you can't um actually hit the notes you know you, you can you can try and get the sound out it's not that the, your voice is not working there it's more to do with that you're not accurate within the sounds you're making or you're going to hit notes and it just doesn't sound very nice um dry like i said a dry tickly throat um often it can be while you're singing but it could be just through the day you know you just kind of feel like you need to keep clearing your throat or keep coughing and often go uh, what goes hand in hand in that with is with um a lot of gunk like a lot of needing to clear your throat so as you start singing we start to shift bits around in our head naturally and that's 
fine. That's, that's, that's what we expect to do because we need to kind of clear all the nastiness that's going through our throat. But when that's happening, um, when, you, when you've been singing for a while and you've not had that, and then you've been singing for maybe 10, 15 minutes, maybe even half an hour, maybe even an hour, whatever you're singing for, if you suddenly have a lot of gunk appear around your throat where you need to clear and, um, and keep trying to get rid of that, that is a warning sign that your voice has been kind of battered, you know? Our vocal folds, they're, they're made up of strips of um, muscle and then this kind of the kind of three free flowing i always struggle with that one free flowing um kind of gooey layer that's got the top layer that's made out of the stuff that's in like your in your eyes it's called a mucosal membrane and what happens when that gets damaged it creates more gunk and it creates more gunk to protect itself and try and kind of um, protect that that damaged area. So if you are suddenly getting a lot of gunk after singing for a long time, that could be a sign that you've probably gone too far within your singing. And um, the last one is pretty obvious, but a lot of people don't tend to, to think about it too much is when you actually lose your voice. Um, hopefully this is rare. If you are getting to the point where you are losing your voice completely after you sing, then you need to be really, really careful and you need to probably get in contact straight away because that's something I would want to look at. Now, this is not to scare you because sometimes when I, I give that list of like warning signs to people, people go, I've damaged my voice, I'm not going to be able to do it. Or they go, oh, I'm not that bothered. <laughs> so I kind of want you to get the, the appropriate reaction to this. It is one of those things that is, it's boring and it's not the fun side of singing. It is not the, um, the kind of the side of singing that I like to focus on too much within when I'm teaching people but it is probably the most essential part. It's, it's the most important part because actually as singers, you need to be looking after your instrument just the same as if you play guitar. If you play guitar and your string snapped, you'd replace that and you would go and care for your guitar within your singing voice. And because it's something that we can't see, we don't tend to put that same care and attention into it as what we would other parts of our body that get injured, okay? So what I want you to start thinking about is that these are the warning signs that you need to look out for. It doesn't mean you've got something seriously wrong with your voice. And at the same time, you may have none of those, but if you are still worried about your voice, you need to, to kind of do something about it and get in contact because we don't want you to worry about anything to do with that. Now, there is a lot of things that may need to be worked through in order to keep your voice healthy, but you can start right now by making sure you're drinking plenty of water, two to three litres of water a day, um, depending on your size, depending on, on how old you are as well. Um, we want to make sure that you're drinking plenty of water. Um, there is a little si um, thing that you might remember from my video before about um, where they say pee clear, sing clear. So if you, when you go for a wee and you look down the, <laughs> look down the loo and you see what colour it is, if it's looking very, very dark, that can be um, an indication that you're a little bit dehydrated. So that is, that's a good way to, to kind of gauge whether you think you're drinking enough water. But two to three litres of water is what is industry recommended for a lot of people. So water. Um, I do sometimes recommend steaming, but you've got to be very, very careful with that. And that can actually cause um, a little bit of issues because there's a lot of heat coming from that. So I don't like to recommend that often. If you steam already, then that is great. And if you um, if you are looking at steaming, because you've heard that that's what people like to do as singers, make sure that um, you do that around a parent um, because that's so important because it's very, very hot and it's very, very, um, very dangerous in some ways. So it's, it's, it's essential to help look after vocal health, but at the same time there, there can be a little bit dangerous when you look at it. So please be very, very careful if you've seen anywhere about steaming and you, you're giving it a go because the, like I said, there are some warning signs there. You can also use what a lot of West End singers use and a lot of gigging singers use is nebulizers, and that has um, you can get like these little things like of Amazon, and you just put some saline solution in, and you can inhale those, and that is really really helpful for getting um, hydration to your vocal folds. Um, that's not steam and it's not hot, so it's cooler, and there's not as many of the risks that could go with using heat. Okay, now I don't really want to talk too much about steam because it is it's a whole video in itself, you know. So we can we can look at that another time. But that's just for those of you who do like to steam right now, or who have worked with me in the past, and they know that I um, I often recommend steam for vocal health issues. But please remember that it's dangerous, and that you need to be um, very very careful with yourself because I don't want you to score yourself because remember it's steam it's hot you know it's gonna it's gonna have to be hot in order to, to steam so like I said please be very very careful if you have read anywhere about steaming for singers and you are not familiar with what you should and shouldn't do with it okay um so water steaming the bottle and straw is really really helpful to help maintain your vocal health 
and uh, there's a video on there already about that. And um, finally, it's making sure that you are warming up for your voice. You know, if you were going to be singing, you're going to be doing head voice or chest voice singing. And say you're going to be singing in your chest voice all day, but all you're doing is warming up in your head voice. That's not an appropriate warm up for the songs that you're going to be singing. Um, if you're not familiar with warm ups, UVG have a lot of warm ups uh, available for you to find within the group. Um, I will probably also do a, um, a vocal health warm up. Um, so warm up that's, that's good for when your voice is feeling a little bit tired and a little bit uncomfortable. Um, there was another one, I said the final one, but there is another one. The most important one is making sure that you are singing songs that are safe for you. Now, I'm going to make some more videos kind of going into each of these areas a little bit more in depth, but it's so important that if you think that song's too big for you, if it's, it's causing you strain, it's causing you effort, it's causing you to push, that song may not be appropriate for you and that may be causing you more problems. Now, if you are finding that, there are a lot of YouTube backing tracks in different keys and that may be really, really helpful. Now, I've kind of brushed along very briefly on a lot of subject areas there that each of them will need their own video. So I will get on and do those over the upcoming weeks. But right now, I want you to go away and I want you to think about when you are singing, are you feeling any of those problems that I stated earlier? If you are, please don't hesitate to get in touch with us at UVG because we can give you some advice on what you can do to help your voice and to help get your voice in better shape so you can sing all the songs that you want to sing. Now, it's not anything to worry about. I'm just gonna keep saying it. It's not anything to worry about. It's not anything to panic about, but I want you to take it seriously. I want you to think, right, actually, no, that is a good point. I am coughing whenever I sing a high note, you know? And um, there's lots of things we can do to help fix it. But today's video is about bringing some awareness of what you should and shouldn't be feeling when you sing. And you shouldn't be feeling pain. You shouldn't feel uncomfortable. And if you are, there's things we can do to help you. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed my um, kind of rants on vocal health, to be honest, I'm not going to lie, it's one of those things that I'm very passionate about and I'm really um, keen for people to start taking seriously because I've worked with all those singers that have had to cancel um, thousands of pounds worth of gigs, you know, and, and lose out on massive opportunities. I've had people have to turn down big shows at the O2 and um and, and just kind of give up massive massive dreams because they've not looked after their voice properly and um yeah it's, it's really sad and, it, and it's really difficult so i just want you to make sure that you are giving your voice the best shot to keep singing and to keep you enjoying your music okay so that is it for today and i will see you next week with um with more videos on vocal health and singing see you soon I'm just